All right. So what was I talking about earlier when I said that this this can be done done in two ways, and we did the sort of easy way now. Well, what I'm talking about is actually doing it in nodal wise. So in order to do that, we need to compute the um, the mass matrix for each. Yeah, in, in, inside here. So let, let's do that. Let's see what what I mean. So uh, the mass matrix is going to be nodes as big as, as we have nodes. So we do zeros and we do number of nodes. Yeah, and NOD here again. All right, and we're going to do a, the, the standard um, assembly type of thing here now. OK, so let's actually let's get in here and run this so inside of this thing. So now I can. Uh, hover over M and see that it is, it is uh, 306 times 306. Uh, and what we're going to do now is we're going to create the the mass matrix. Yeah, we need the uh, row. Do we have that? Yeah, we have it here. Okay, so it's done in the following. Let's see here. Um, we have phi, right? And we take phi and multiply it with itself, according to what you have earlier seen in uh, Peter's lecture notes. So if you do this, this is called an outer product. You're multiplying uh, this vector with matrix multiplication with this vector. Oh, come on, uh, there we go. And you will you will end up with this thing here. Okay, so. Yeah, so if you do that, uh, you can work out the mathematics behind that, but if you just trust me, if you do that, you will end up with the mass matrix. So we need to multiply this with rho. Okay, we have that here. And we need to multiply this with uh, this stuff here in order to get rid of this, uh, in order to integrate this. And then we're going to put this we are going to assemble this uh, the easy way which is just take e nodes e nodes is equal to oh, I so wish they had plus equal uh, but they don't because reasons all right so this is going to take and uh, and assemble the mass matrix it's going to take uh, this thing here Mm, what? E nodes indos. No, that's wrong. Not indos. Okay, so evaluate this. So it's going to take uh, stuff that doesn't exist and put it uh, and put uh, other stuff that doesn't exist uh, there plus the stuff that does it does that does it exist like i mean it's it's uh you should, you should know this by now uh, this is standard uh, assembly stuff okay but the only thing that uh, is different is that this is sort of a weight factor now so this is a base function it weighs and then what does it weigh with well the material how much material is in there okay so if you do this and divide whatever we have assembled for the nodes later, we will get the best sort of averaging you can get. All right. So what 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 should we? I mean, well, maybe maybe it was the wrong way to start off with doing the mass matrix. Let's see what what we really need here now. Take uh, in or rather create a another uh, vector called the E11 vector, and E11 is going to be the same size as nodes now. So it's a nodal vector for E11. So E11 is uh, zeros, number of nodes, and one. Okay, so it's a scalar vector field for E11. All right. So and 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 I'm gonna assemble. I'm gonna assemble I nodes in there. So like this plus, and what I'm gonna do here now is take this stuff again and throw it in there yeah that's going to be a scalar so i need to take this as well the phi so take 
and put it like this. So so this is the so this is the actual uh, epsilon vector. Evaluate that, and I multiply it with phi. So I scale it with the um, in, interpolate it with the uh, function uh, evaluate selection. So I get it at the Gauss points. This is what it, this means. Uh, I have it at the I have epsilon here. I have interpolated it at the Gauss points, and then I'm gonna put this in the uh, nodes and assemble it. Okay. Yeah. So let's uh, let's do that. So it should be uh, yeah. Th this should be going um, be assembled now. So what we have at the, at the very end here. Um, let's put a thing here. Save and run. Now we have E11 is 306 and it's it's filled with a bunch of stuff. But if we were to plot this now, we would not get the right results because this is not weighted with the actual weight. There's uh, too many points now. We need to we need to divide this with something. So we're gonna do that, and it's backwards. Um, actually, it's not a division. It's um, let's let's put this in. Yeah, no, let's do it first. So we take our mass matrix, and we do we do a backwards division with E11. That's a Gauss elimination. So it's gonna take whatever is in uh, the mass matrix. It's gonna weight E E E11 here with uh, the the mass of these elements. And we're gonna create a struct and call it E E11 here, and we're gonna put that stuff in there. All right. Actually, let's, let's do this for this as well. So maybe we can make make a function out of this and just return e. Okay, so now our color data here uh, can be e11. So e dot e11. Okay. So let's see what happens now. Uh, you have the previous. No, we don't have that. Never mind that. Um, let's do. Let's let's show the difference here that and run this uh, fail assignment e is e already taken shouldn't be line 80 what's wrong with line 80 is e in use ah yes e is in use yeah it's not gonna work uh, let's do e, e, e. Mm, that's gonna be dirty let's not do that <laughs> how about yeah let's do it be clear e up here we're just using e inside of this anyway so it doesn't really matter uh, or actually we're yeah no we're not using e later e is the modulus that's why it doesn't work uh, so it needs to be cleared now it it is cleared and we get this stuff here and then we can run this uh, get rid of the breakpoint okay so this is what we had earlier all right can imprint this into your eyeballs and then or actually you know what you can code everything we have this right here so scale is 10 actually let's put this out out there and then we can do do, 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 do e e dot and tab e1 and let's run it again look there so this is what we have and this is what we have now you might say well what's the change what's the difference well first of all there's something wrong with this <laughs> um, maybe it's because I messed up this is not the actual mass matrix I get rid of row sorry about that uh, I got confused it's uh, yeah no uh, it is a mass matrix but it's it's I mean it's not the complete mass matrix which you use to do um, you know the dynamic calculations it doesn't contain the actual mass it's a mass of how big the elements are in a sense so if you run this again hey look there we have the same uh, value up here which means that yeah so th this is the element average and this is now average by the uh, the, the size of the elements.
or the yeah in a sense the mass matrix okay so what the the, the really interesting thing here now is that this is, this is the flat shading but C data check this out uh, if we go in here now or actually let's do two of them so we go in here we, we can check that our C data is 250 times 1 that's the same size as our nodes okay if you continue, you can see that C data is now 306, which is the same as our uh, as the P, which means that we can change this to interp prepare for mind blowing event and see this beautiful uh, interpolated uh, color here. If that doesn't blow your mind, then you don't have a mind. So. This is what is needed in order to um, visualize some nice pictures. All right, so yeah, um, this is what Abacus does as well. Probably a lot more efficient than, than this code here, but still the, oh my God, this is almost 40 minutes long. All right, for you poor people that have watched this, uh, now you know how it works. And this is just one part of uh, of a huge, huge story. So, this is nodal um, nodal averaging versus uh, element uh, values. So let me let me just show you the whole thing instead of uh, showing you the details. So, if we close this and we close this, so well, well, now you can try to do it yourself with the stress. Right, because the stress is actually. Uh, let me see where do I, where do I have it. One, what I was after is actually this thing here. This is what you have. So you have your strain, which is here, and you can create this stuff. This is the stress uh, tensor. Okay. So, yeah. So, what do you need? Nothing. You have all of it. Ah, awesome. Let's create it. Let's go on, and uh, then you can visualize it as uh, maybe von Mises stress. I don't know, von Mises stress, probably here, yeah, there we go, look, von Mises stress. So you can visualize it as this. Uh, yeah, so let's let's show you how um, how this stuff could look like. Uh, if we go, did I comment this out? Yeah, I did. So um, I made, made a function out of this, and let me show you something nice here. This is the equivalent uh, strain. So it's uh, something like von Mises for strain. So if I run this, uh, I forgot this one as well. If I run this, uh, it's gonna take some time because it does something interesting. It actually computes the, um, let's see where, where I put it. Uh, the, 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 it's, no, 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 yes. Uh, it actually computes the um, the the uh, it computes the eigenvector for the epsilon, and it visualizes that as a principal uh, maximum principal stress here. Uh, so you can see it here. So this is the maximum principal stress. Oh, strain. Sorry. And if you compare this to Abacus, you can see that it's the same max principle with all the colors. I didn't bother with the colors, but so yeah, so this and this is pretty much the same. <laughs> all right, so this is um, yeah, so this is a little bit little qu quick demonstration of how post processing works in MATLAB or behind the scenes of Abacus. So now you know.